Well, I appreciate this opportunity. It really is an honor. And, and I have to tell you that it's an honor to speak in front of some of the speakers, but it's more of an honor to speak in front of, in front of you folks, some of which I have met over the years at uh, the Bioresearch Annual Conference. And as Dennis said, I'm a little surprised at, uh, at the following because it is, it is a tremendous, uh, I've, I don't remember speaking too many more than this. So I break it down into four types of patients. The first type of patient is that patient with negative signs and negative symptoms. That individual, very healthy, great occlusion, no signs of dysfunction or destruction. A type 2 patient is a patient with positive signs and negative symptoms. I see wear, I see abfractions, I see broken teeth, I see crowding, I see gingival loss. But when we inquire, they are not complaining. I have no symptoms. <laughs> type 3 patients are patients that have positive signs and symptoms. I see abfractions, I see wear, and they complain of temporal pain, morning cheek pain, popping, clicking, whatever. And so my job is to listen to what they're saying, listen, and then see if I can understand. And the fourth type of patient is a patient that has negative signs, positive symptoms. I have an inability to understand why they're saying what they're saying. And unfortunately, many of these type 4 patients, we simply call nutcases. They must be nuts because I don't understand why they're complaining. In dentistry, we treat signs. So that eliminates two types of patients. That eliminates the one and the four. And so we're left with type two and type three people. index. And this is the KF index. Bruce Kinney and Larry Funt and Brendan Stack came later and it became the KFS index. And I've put my version of that uh, in your manual. And I find it a tremendous asset my job, then, is to understand why they may circle limited opening. Is it a disc interference disorder? Is it muscular in nature? Can I see why they say? Inability to find bite may be the temporalis hyperactivity. So we associate concerns based on what we hear and then examine the relationship. <clears throat> Team J examinations may be something as simple as range of motion, okay. lateral ranges, deviations or deflections, palpations. Okay. My preference is to utilize two devices, joint vibration analysis and the T-scan. Joint vibration analysis utilizing sensors placed over the joint. I describe it to my patients as an EKG for the joint. We simply listen to the joint and the, and the, and the sounds spit out on the monitor. So we're going to do an EKG of your joint and find out, is there pathology? And if there is pathology, to what degree? And I have these in your manual as well. And what I'd like to do is just show you how the T-scan works. The T-scan, as you saw, is a handle device with a fork and a wafer in between with about 1,300 little cells. And these cells are activated by force and the time that the force was applied. So all I have to do is chomp on this and we get a recording, a movie. There it is. What I did is I simply tracked her path on the jaw tracker. Tracked her path to the vertical that I wanted. 
I was going to choose a plane based off HIP and then track the path and choose a point. 